as reported by Sports Vision, the week camera. It was a nerve-wracking year for West Coast football fans, with each Saturday bringing a new crop of upsets. At Palo Alto, Stanford was lightly regarded as the season opened, but piled up nine straight victories and a league record of six wins and one loss for coach Chuck Taylor to earn the title and the Rose Bowl invitation. In his first year as head man of the farm, Taylor stamped himself as one of the nation's ablest young coaches. The Stanford staff fielded a team that repeatedly rose to whatever heights the occasion demanded. Watch Gary Kikorian, spark plug of the Stanford tee, as he's nearly trapped by San Jose State lineman, then breaks loose for 68 yards and a touchdown. was the Indian Sunday punch. Here it's Kokorian to All-American Bill McCall for six more points against the Spartans. Facing UCLA this time, Gary passes to halfback Eric Southwood, who laterals to Bill Storham for a gain of 52 yards. Switching to the ground against the Bruins, Stanford shook fullback Bob Mathias into the open on this play for 27 yards to set up an Indian touchdown. Against Washington, it's back to the air lanes as a screen pass from Kokorian to Storham gains 58 yards with Bill McCall leading the play. In the Washington State game, Gary throws to halfback Ron Cook for a net of 17 yards. Faking beautifully, Kokorian completely fooled the Cougars on this one and spots McCall all alone in the end zone. The Indians reached their peak against USC with the same combination, Kikorian to McCall, clicking for the first touchdown as Big Bill makes a beautiful catch. After the Trojans went in front, Bob Mathias took this kickoff and set sail on one of the most dramatic runs of the season. 96 yards to put Stanford back in the ball game. After that, there was no stopping the Indians. Late in the game, Harry Hugazian drives to the SC one-yard line. On the next play, Hugazian hurdles into the end zone to put Stanford in front for good. Clinching the Rose Bowl bid against Oregon State, the Indians spring Ron Cook over left tackle from the 19-yard line. <laughs> 
Even in defeat, they made touchdowns look easy. Against California, Kikorian hoodwinks the Bears and pitches to Morley for Stanford's only score. Closing seconds of the California game, the Indians reached deep into their bag of tricks and came up with this one. It's Kokorian to McCall, and watch Big Bill heave that ball. 60 yards in the air, only to be broken up on the California goal line. Second place in the conference race went to the scrappy UCLA Bruins from Westwood, who overcame a series of early season injuries to finish with four wins, one loss, and a tie. Coach Henry Red Sanders and his assistants turned out a single wing 11 that met the best in the nation, growing more powerful as the season progressed. In the opener against Texas A&M, the Bruins uncovered one of the coast's brightest stars in sophomore Paul Cameron. Here he batters his way through and over tacklers for a UCLA touchdown. The Bruins' downfield blocking was in midseason form as Pete Daly fielded this punt and raced 73 yards for a UCLA score against the Aggies. Against Illinois, champions of the Big Ten, Cameron pitches to Ernie Stockard for a Bruin touchdown. There's a beautiful downfield block by Gail Pace coming up as Cameron starts left, reverses his field, and runs 40 yards through the Illini. scored their first victory in the Santa Clara game. Here, Cameron passes to Don Stalwick for one of their seven touchdowns. Ernie Stockard, who broke a school record with 30 pass receptions, shows how he did it with a sensational catch against Stanford. UCLA shot the works against Oregon. On an end around, Pete O'Gara circles the left side and goes all the way for six of the Bruins' 41 points. Facing California, the Bruins finally showed what they could do. A consistent ground gainer all day was this full spinner, with fullback Luther Keyes bullying his way up the middle for lots of yardage. Bruin blocking was never better than on this play as Keyes and Julie Weistein team up on California's Ed Bartlett to spring Cameron over the right side for 22 yards. Used sparingly this season, little Teddy Narleski proves he can still ramble as he zigzags 55 yards in the Washington game. Keep your eye open for a nice downfield block by Pete O'Gara.
USC was the team the Bruins wanted to beat most, and they did it with a freewheeling attack that sprung Don Stalwick loose for 45 yards on this modified Statue of Liberty play. UCLA defense sealed the Trojans' doom. In slow motion, watch Don Mumaw pick off Rudy Bukic's hurried pass and return it 22 yards for a score. At Berkeley, the University of California had its ups and downs before winding up in third place with five wins and two defeats. Nobody believed Coach Pappy Waldorf when he said his Bears were overrated. Even Pappy couldn't foresee the loss of Johnny Osheski for most of the season. Johnny O was on hand, though, when the Bears played Minnesota. On this play, he swings around the right side and scampers 47 yards. California gets revenge against the Gophers for those Big Ten Rose Bowl defeats as they send Johnny Papa through left guard for a 61-yard touchdown gallop. In a high-scoring battle with Washington State, it's Osheski around left end for 81 yards and one of six California touchdowns. Against USC, the Bears took to the air with this pass from Billy Mays to Dave Hood, moving the ball to the Trojan two-yard line. On the next play, Bill Powell dives over for a touchdown, but it wasn't enough. California lost its first conference game in four years. Only bright spot in the Bears' loss to UCLA was a 63-yard touchdown run by Harry West with the help of some typically fine California downfield blocking. A record went by the boards on this play in the Oregon State game as halfback Bill Powell busted over left guard and raced 98 yards for the longest run from scrimmage in California history. One chance left for a successful season, the Bears made the most of it. Don Robinson breaks up the middle for 35 yards and a touchdown against Stanford in the first quarter of the big game. On practically the same play, California's Johnny Papa hits right guard at the 21 and races through the Indians for another score. First to topple the Golden Bears were the Trojans of USC, who finished the season in fourth place with four wins and two losses. This year saw Coach Jess Hill reinstall a single wing at Southern California, and the move paid early dividends. Like Stanford's Chuck Taylor, Hill was stepping into a new job this fall, and the first thing he did was line up some top-notch assistants. In Johnny Williams, the Trojans had the league leader in punt and kickoff returns. In the season's opener against Washington State, he takes a kick off on his own 10 and streaks 90 yards to a score.
The Trojans didn't discard the T formation completely. Operating from it on this play against San Diego Navy, quarterback Rudy Bukic fades, tosses to Jim Sears at midfield, and Sears goes all the way. If the Trojans had one big play all season, this was it. From the single wing against California, Frank Gifford breaks up the ball game in the third quarter with a sensational 69-yard scoring run. Gifford gave the Bears fits all afternoon. Here he is again, dodging and twisting for 22 more yards. Dean Snyder did most of the Trojan quarterbacking. Against Texas Christian, Snyder drops back and tosses one to fullback Pat Duff, again for 22 yards. With TCU leading 13 to 7, Duff dives over center to start the Trojans on their way to victory. The Trojans had their share of blocking. In the Stanford game, Elmer Wilhoyt and Leon Sellers helped spring Al Carmichael loose on a reverse for 36 yards and a touchdown. Working from the T formation against UCLA, Schneider spots fullback Harold Hahn and hits him with a pass good for 10 yards. This time it's Jim Sears moving through a big hole over right guard for 18 yards to set up SC's only touchdown against the Bruins. One of the season's pleasantest surprises was the showing of Washington State's Cougars from Pullman, who won four league games while losing three under coach Forrest Eveshevsky. 1951 was a happy year for Eveshevsky and Washington State Dean of Athletics, Golden Romney. In the USC game, sophomore quarterback Bob Burkhart throws one of 15 touchdown passes he completed this year for a new conference record. This one's to end Don Steinbrunner. The Cougars show off their ground game against the Trojans as fullback Jim Head circles right end, laterals to halfback Dwight Poole, and then leads the play for 19 yards. An alert defense paid off more than once for Washington State, now in the dark jerseys against California. Billy Mays passes for the Bears, but Al Charlton intercepts and runs it back for a touchdown to put the Cougars out in front. After California tied the score, halfback Byron Bailey breaks through left tackle and races 50 yards to give Washington State a one touchdown lead they couldn't hold. The Cougars' Ed Barker broke a national record by catching passes good for 864 yards, including 38 on this play, as he takes a Burkhart aerial for a touchdown against Stanford. The 
same combination, Burkhardt to Barker rings the bell again, this time from the Stanford six-yard line. At Corvallis, Oregon, great things were expected this fall of Oregon State College. The Beavers wound up with a league record of three and five, but played fine ball for coach Kip Taylor. Against USC, they strike through the air as quarterback Gene Morrow pitches to captain John Thomas for a touchdown. In the California game, Don Harris drops back to punt for the Bears. Gene Taft takes it on his own 41, fakes a reverse, and swings down the sideline to the California five-yard line. Oregon State makes it look easy on this one in the Stanford game as Gene Morrow loops a touchdown pass to Dwayne Helbig. Dick Horn punts for the Indians. Sam Baker reverses to Taff and the Santa Paula boy goes all the way to the Stanford 11 before Horn belts him out of bounds. Most of the heartbreaks were in Seattle this year as the Huskies dropped five tough ones in league play under coach Howie O'Dell. It's hard for athletic director Harvey Castle to muster a smile. Though they finished seventh, the Huskies, here are two reasons as Sam Mitchell passes Sprague in the California game and Sprague makes the play go for 42 yards. Most potent Husky weapon was fullback Hugh McElhaney, who takes a pitch out from Mitchell on this play, twists his way into the clear, and outruns the Bears' secondary 65 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> Hustlin' Hugh had a big day against UCLA in Los Angeles, too. This time, he breaks through left tackle and turns on the speed for 48 yards and another score. McElhaney neared a league record with 125 points this fall in the closing minutes against the Bruins. Dick Sprague juggles Mitchell's pass, but Hugh gathers it in and goes all the way for a touchdown that led to a tie. Although Oregon finished eighth in the conference, they're mighty proud of the Ducks and Eugene because of the brand of football they played for their new coach, Len Casanova. Casanova's young squad threw a big scare into California before losing only by two points. On this play against the Bears, freshman George Shaw passes to Leroy Campbell for an Oregon touchdown. This time, Shaw takes a handoff from Hal Dunham, drops back and pitches to Monty Bethrauer, who goes to the California one-yard line. Shaw set a new league record for interceptions and was a top pass receiver, too. Here he takes one from Dunham behind the California secondary for another Oregon score. <laughs> 
And there you have it, team by team, all the thrills of Pacific Coast Conference football for 1951. <laughs>